guys and welcome back to my channel. That's always my lame little intro, but hi, welcome back. So before we hop in, one thing I wanted to say was thank you to everyone who was so supportive in our last video of us like blocking people. Yeah. I've been blocking people like crazy and I know I mentioned that before, but um, I really have been and it's been really liberating to know like, you know what, if you are like South Central USA, you are not gonna be here. And I even like, I even block over seemingly silly things. Like if someone comments, ew, it's disgusting. Get your little dog off the counter. That's so gross. Block. <laughs> block. <laughs> I'm like, bye. You don't have to be here. And now so, you're banned for life. <laughs> yeah, and you're gone. <laughs> so it's, um, I just, I appreciate it. And I'm glad that you guys feel the same way that I feel, that we're creating an environment of peace on my channel. And you are more than welcome to disagree and give suggestions. Those are not people that deserve to get banned. It's people that are sassy with a capital giant S or have any kind of negative attitude. I'm like, and I don't want you here. So um, we are back today to talk to you guys about our foster classes. So we have officially started taking PATH classes. Say it with me, Dan. Parents as tender, tender healers. healers. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to you about our first class. Now, um, we're going to do a video for each class just to kind of give you an idea of what we learned. Um, path classes are not the classes that are required in every state in the U S but to my knowledge, they are the classes that are required in a lot of states. Like a lot of states have path classes apparently. Um, and so it's a system or like a a way of learning that has been developed, I guess, by like child psychologists and people within the DCS system. And they take you through everything that they deem that you need to know before entering into the foster care system. So today we're going to go over class one and just tell you what our experience was like, what we noticed, what we felt and all that jazz. So first off, yes, the notebook is big. It's a big notebook. And up until this point, We've done three of them already. Yeah, so we're going to be knocking out these videos. We were really sick with the flu, if you didn't know that, so we were not able to film those videos. So now we're going to kind of catch up. We have notes about all of the classes. Um, and yeah, so when we first showed up to PATH, I think one thing that we noticed was it was probably, like we guessed, about 50% of the people that showed up to that original interest class were in this round. I think there's more than, more than 50%. Yeah. But I did did notice that there were some people that weren't there, but I think it, was it was a pretty large group. I turn out. Yeah, it was a pretty, a pretty large group. Actually, it was so big that our agency could not have the classes at their building. They had to get like a, a church that volunteered to let us use the space because there were too many of us there. So um, there are a lot of people that were in our class and some of them have been foster parents before. Some of them are brand new, just like us. So yeah, first class, first thing we noticed, big notebook. Second thing we noticed, good food. They fed us really well. Mm -hmm. um, we were shocked about that. And also, I guess a third thing we noticed, um, our teachers were and are really nice. I don't remember what their technical terms are. It's like a foster parent facilitator and then like a, I don't even know. We have to fill out this form every week too, like the survey, and I still don't remember what their titles officially are because at the end of class, we have to take an anonymous survey telling them what we thought about that lesson. Yep. <laughs> but every class is <laughs> three hours long. So um, that's kind of with the survey thing. By the end, they're just kind of like, okay, so what do you think about this lesson? So um, yeah, good food, nice teachers. I'd say the biggest focus of that first PATH class was how the court system works and the different acronyms for just all the things that you're going to encounter. So like DCS, Department of Child Services. So he's scrolling through is. this first chapter that we went through called Under Understanding the Child Welfare System. And they literally gave us a page that says DCS acronyms. Now three pages because three pages. when they talk with the lawyers and the CPS representatives, they talk in acronyms all the time. And if you're not familiar with them, it's like they're speaking in a different language. And yeah. there's like 200 of them here. So yeah, they, they want you to get familiar with like the key ones. So you have an idea 
of what they're talking about without having to interrupt every 20 seconds to figure I, out what I'm like, I still about. am going to be interrupting because these acronyms, And it's that's like, also fine. It's an so. MCO, a managed care organization. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just an LDI, a legally defensible interviewing or legally defensible interviewing. Oh, yeah, you know, a BPR, a board of professional responsibility. Like, literally, there are so many acronyms. And our teacher said that to us. She was like, yeah, they really like acronyms in DCS. And FBA, like, no kidding. Functional behavior assessment. Mm. So, it's just... A GAF? Global assessment of functioning? I mean, how would you even know all of these? And ROCM, risk-oriented case management. RPS, resource parent support worker i mean why would you need to know what an rsc is a respiratory well, this, like, virus a thp or a thv a trial home placement or a trial home visit mm -hmm. i don't know i just think like especially this many acronyms like it's, it's a little excessive can you just say it like, Didn't they do an office like, episode of that? Yeah. Or it's like, we're making it easier by shortening it. It's like, you're making it harder. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, if you just spend the extra two seconds saying, saying the sentence. It's like, yeah, you're not saving money by saving the syllables that are coming out of your <laughs> mouth. Like, it's know. a lot. But it's That was system. one of the things that I actually wrote on the survey. One of the questions was like, what was most valuable about this session what was least valuable and i chose to write the section about the acronyms because i didn't find that too important to what we're trying to do here because we're like that's not really my deal them. so well that's the thing i was going to say before you move on to that um th we've had questions about this and i think i addressed this in one video but even when we're going to be presenting these classes to you I, obviously we've said this a billion times we're not experts we don't know what we're talking about because we've never actually done it um but also we're like even though we're understanding and processing what they're teaching us although on a side note a lot of this stuff just through our own research and stuff we had already stumbled across like a lot of the videos they've shown us in class i'm like i actually already watched that um but even though that's the case our goal is still to adopt out of the foster care system if there's a child that the family relationship cannot be reconciled and it's not a good situation so we're not going into this with like all right let's get to know at least not at this point let's get to know the foster care system because we're going to become like full-blown foster parents so um i just i guess wanted to give that disclaimer as we're presenting things we're really just doing these videos for those of you that are interested to know kind of like what you're going into and also for our own documentation yeah. we'll just see what god yeah. has for us but he opened a page um, which I thought was very interesting and it was kind of how the judicial system, I guess, works for juvenile court. So they explained to us like, which I'm still kind of trying to understand the difference between like, I don't understand when you develop the permanency plan. That was something that was discussed in our first lesson as well. There was a lot, the whole like court system is confusing, but they actually gave us, oh, that's, per oh, that's the permanency hearing. The preliminary, okay. maybe you should take a screenshot. Yeah, we're definitely going to show this. Um, I mean, this is something like they're giving, a t giving it to us as a guide. So as we go, we can reference. But just like so many other things in life, I don't think it's really going to sink in until we live it. This is just like for us to not be going completely blind. But they do lay out what the system looks like for a child that is in the system. We don't even have to go into detail of that. Yeah, I don't want to pretend like... No, 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 we don't have to. I know the system it. and I'm going to teach it, even though it's right here and you can pause the video and go over it. Yeah, this uh, is what you'll learn in class. We're just yeah. like conveying, like, <laughs> hey, this is what they covered. Yeah. Um, another thing that they covered in here was something called the, the CFTM the child and family team meeting. And I think that's something that we're gonna end up doing that everyone that gets placed with a kid, you end up doing within like two to three days and you meet. And I think you literally develop like a plan, like you figure out 
okay, like for example, someone within our agency told us, um, when you go to these meetings, make sure that something that's brought up right away is visitation rights and when those visitations are going to happen because apparently it can get really chaotic in the system and scheduling meetings. So you want to kind of like attack that. That's not the right phrasing, but you want to address that early on so that you're all on the same page and just to create some like order to it all. You create a plan. This plan becomes like an official plan. And then there is a, uh, and it gives the court permanency. To reference. No, at some point after maybe like six months, you go to court and the judge looks at the plan that you guys had come up with months before. And then he goes, Okay, have you guys stuck to this plan? Uh, is the parent visiting the kid? And they look at progress twice a week, of once the health a week of the whatever. kid. Right. Uh, and then um, based off the plan that you guys made between the social worker, us, the parent, and the attorney or whoever else is in that room, um, yeah, they just assess from there. Yeah. And like is everything going on schedule because if it isn't they still have time to you know do things right and do what they can to get the state to give them permission to take their kid back but it says here at the very end if they haven't shown any initiative or you know whatever it is no it's specifically this if a child has been in custody for 15 of the last 22 months that is grounds for termination of parental rights. So right. it has to do with following the permanent or following the the permanency plan, the goal of the plan, um, you know, showing up to visitation, whatever it is. Because here's the thing, and I'll say this every single episode: <laughs> um, every case is completely different. That's something that has been beat over our head over and over. Videos, our agency, they're like, this is just so you're not blindsided. But every case is different. So whatever the parents need to do to be reunified with their child, all of that, it's different. But that statement, that's grounds for TPR, termination of parental rights. They do have a time limit. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if they've spent a year and a half and they don't, you know, adhere to the the plan, Mm -hmm. then the state will say, well, it doesn't seem like, you know. And that's for the good of the child because you want children to have... That's stability fine. so it's like they have to put a cap on it so that it's not just years and years and years of like of like oh am i gonna go back to my birth parents am i gonna go to a different foster home like what's gonna happen stringing the process yes. along the court us the other case workers oh they talk about confidentiality and the fact that like you have to keep things um private like from the internet obviously and friends and like their specific situations and just like they talked about privacy well and you also don't want to uh a really big thing they they talk about and they talked about it in every session so far is to not bad mouth the parents to the kid or bad mouth the kid in front of the social worker right like they were saying like someone was talking about a child. I think they're bipolar. I think they're this. I think they're that. And it's like, okay, first off, the kid can hear you. But second off, our job is not to diagnose the child. Like it's just to love them and take care of them and support them. And mm-hmm. as they said last night, to disciple them. So, yeah. We did do a group activity. We have to do group. We do group activities pretty much every class. And that first group activity was when we paired up. And we had to say, like, what are the things that birth parents provide for their children? So we were like, okay, you know, security. Or what they down. Yes. Yeah. Security, life skills, love, morals, food, shelter. Like, we had to write all them down as a group. And then we had to circle, what, the top three, mm-hmm. like, our most important. Now, the funny thing is I don't remember the purpose of it. Was it because that's what we're going to try to give? Well, every group had, like, the same... Yeah, the same three. answers. Yeah. I think the purpose was multifaceted. I think it was not only to show us like what we can strive to give the foster children that are in our home, but also to help us understand how big of a deal parents are in a child's life. 
Um, and to just understand, I think that's the thing they're trying to make everyone understand the impact and the largeness of being a child and being taken out of your home and put in someone else's home. We also do homework. So in between every class each week, we have different kinds of homework that we have to get done. And that week we had to do something called like relationship or community mapping. And basically it was like this graph thing where we had to share and explain who the different relationships are in our life, um, how they support us, if it's a strong connection, a weak connection, if it's mostly energy going out, or if it's also energy coming in, like if it's a two-way thing, if it's stressful. Um, and really that was just, I think, to not only get you thinking about the support that you have in your life and how you're gonna utilize those resources and that support, but also to like really prove to them too, because these classes are kind of like part of your home study and your approval process is them seeing and knowing that you are like a functioning adult that's plugged into society and is loving and has pe have people around you that can also help and support you. Um, and yeah, I think the last thing that we did is we watched a video on a kid that he's an adult now, but who's been in and out of homes multiple times and was like almost adopted and then wasn't adopted. Um, and the reason they showed us that was really just to explain the gravity and the severity of once again, just how much it rocks a child's world to go from placement to placement. Just once again, hammering home that point as to how much it rocks a child's world when they have to go, not only like just that original, like take it out of their home, but then to go from home to home to home. So they really want you to understand like, hey, when you say yes, this is very serious take this seriously because you can negatively impact a child for the rest of their life. Well, um, that brings us to the end of this video of our first PATH class. I don't know how many questions like we can answer. Like We're just trying to do our best to learn as much as we can. But as always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them down below. All right, guys, so that is it. We will put up the second class soonish in life and then the third class and so on and so forth. And we will see you back here soon. Say bye, Zoe. Oh, I must have referenced Little House on the Prairie like three times last night. Like so many parenting lessons they brought up that I'm like, I just saw that on Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> so that's a suggestion if you're looking for a good show. And we'll see you later. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>